So, uh, so maybe when you could tell me something about your approach to sound and how you feel that would work in the story. The thing that we've learned and we've gone through an 18 month evolution of trying to figure out how best to do these things. And one of the things we learned is that like, because, you might, because you're working with a proprietary tool, that uh, the most typical thing to do would be to compile a sound list of things and perhaps go to a sound effects library and start just pulling these things and putting them together and synchronizing them with click points. Now those of you who have already kind of experimented with tools probably have already tried this. What we found is there was a difficulty in integration of the sounds that like you may choose an explosion. An explosion actually has been recorded from a real explosion from the sound effects library and the microphone might have been 50 meters away. The next thing you do is you have some footsteps and those are recorded at a distance of only maybe a meter. And then you're trying to integrate these sounds together in a way that they sound like they're cohesive in one page, within one page. Now that's not even belying the fact that you're moving out of pages. So what we've been trying to do is constantly bring all the materials together in a way that they all, all sound as if they're within the same environment. There are specific techniques, but essentially there are ways to kind of bring those together. This is a process that we've been working on and learning because the thing is, versus a normal film environment, you would have all of the aggregate sounds and then you would have a full mixing panel and all kinds of things to kind of bring all of these elements together. You don't have that in the tool. They're drag and drop, they're elements and singular elements in the same way that there are elements of color shading and all of that. So there's an aspect of control in the sound that is the same as the kind of color palettes and the kinds of choices for drawing of faces or anything else. So these are choices that probably may be foreign to a lot of people working only in the print medium. The good news is there are parallels to the things you already do. You just have to learn the nomenclature of the language. In terms of the music, we've now done over a hundred of these and maybe the last three were really good, including the other ones. But, but I, I will say this, again, it's, a, it's an aspect of controlling that. You don't just try to mix a certain kind of music that you typically thought of was a good chase out of a Transformer movies, and then in this emotional scene, you said, well, I really like the notebook, and you try to put a music like that. There are choices, again, with the colors and the palettes that you use. If you see any of our work and you can preview any, what you'll notice is like an instance of the uglies, we chose certain instruments and then we stayed with that and we stayed within the limitations. And, and again, the same way that you would choose certain colors and restrict yourself to that so you have a cohesion of message that goes from the beginning to the end. But this is kind of what it is. To me, it's not about the fact that because it's digital, there's every possibility in the world. It's about controlling yourself from a creative standpoint and forcing yourself to make and live with the choices that you've started with. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's great. It's, it's, it's funny to hear you talk about sound, you're talking about it in graphic terms. Yes. So it's really interesting that your approach to it is, is, is one of how the pictures are going to work and how the narrative is going to be told. You know, that's the, yeah. that's the most important thing. That, can I add one thing? You've shown a lot of restraint as well, I think, in the way you've done it, because you kept the reading as the, the you, because we don't have voiceover. Yeah, so it's just an important message, I think, because we, we're behind reading, so we made a conscious decision not to have voiceover in the, in the books, because then it becomes watching. So all the sound is in service of reading, and that takes a lot of restraint, I think, as well. I'd, li I'd like to believe that we've done our job best when people say, this is a good book not, oh, isn't that amazing music? Because I think that there's an aspect of sound design and music where you're drawing away from that. We are in service to the product as it is, and we're not trying to be overwhelming that.